Hi, uh, my name is John Savile and I'm just going to do a quick overview of Quorum uh, in Windows clustering. So, there's been a number of evolutions in Quorum. Um, in Windows 2000, um, what we were used to was essentially we had a number of nodes and in a cluster we typically have two or more nodes. We can have a single node cluster. Um, a lot of times you think, what's the point in that? Um, there are features in clustering around auto-starting programs that have stopped and some capabilities there that may warrant you to have a single node cluster. But most of the time we'll have two or more. So you have a number of active nodes and a number of passive nodes. Active nodes are actually running and offering services. And they have a number of resource groups which have an IP address, uh, a net name, and then a service, maybe a file share, a print share, the HTTP, a virtual machine with Hyper-V, etc. Then we have passive nodes that are essentially ready in the event that something happens to this node, it fails. Uh, it will automatically take these services over. Uh, could maybe also not even a disaster scenario. Maintenance. I want to apply a service pack to this guy or reboot it from a hardware change. I move the services over onto the other node and then shut it down cleanly. But the reason we need the quorum is, well, if these guys stop communicating, I need to make sure that they don't both try and offer the same service. Uh, it would be a disaster if potentially I'm offering a service, maybe a SQL database. I don't want both of these guys offering services on the same SQL database, making changes asynchronously and corrupting the database. So I need to make sure at any time, if there is a break in communications, these guys can't talk, only one part of a cluster, one partition, ever offers services at a time. So the way that used to be handled was, we needed some shared storage. So we could have a number of LUNs, um, areas of disk space. And one of these would be the quorum disk. And basically on that quorum disk, we had a log file that contained the configuration of the cluster. Um, which nodes were active, who was offering services, etc. If there was a break in communication between the nodes, they would still communicate with that shared storage. And the shared storage, that quorum, would tell who should be offering what, who's allowed to. If a node couldn't access the quorum disk, then it would just go into an idle state, waiting to re-establish that communication. So that's great if we have that shared storage available. That was the traditional quorum model. So what basically happened was, well, what if we don't have shared storage? So that disappears. A new mode was uh, made available, a new model, majority node set. And in majority node set, we could have, well, we could always have more than two nodes, but let's say we had additional nodes. In a majority node set, there's still this quorum configuration, but now it's actually stored on each of the nodes in the cluster. They each have their own copy of the quorum, the, the log file configuration, and the clustering service keeps those in sync with each other. So now what happens is, if there's a break in communication, so the network split and a break happens here, so these two can still communicate, this guy's on its own. Each, whichever partition of the cluster has the majority of the nodes, so more than half the number of nodes. So this partition has two out of the three, it has more than half. This would stay active, it would be able to offer services. This partition of the cluster doesn't have more than half the number of nodes, so it would go into a dormant state, it would just sit there idle. That works great if we have an odd number of nodes. If we had four nodes, and we had two on each side, it has its own copy of the quorum again, and there's a break. Well, I have half the number of nodes, I have half the number of nodes, neither of them have the majority, they have the same, neither has more than half, so neither side would actually offer any services. So the majority node set model really only works with an, an odd number of nodes, and only in very specific circumstances, you don't have shared storage available, for example. So, we had those two models available. Now, a new requirement came along, and it was mainly Exchange 2007. 
and I'm not going to go into the details of Exchange 2007 high availability, but essentially they had a new model where they could do something called cluster continuous replication. And essentially the mailboxes, they could exist on shared storage or they could be directly attached. We had an active node and we had a passive node. He had a separate copy of the mailbox database. And essentially the transaction logs, as they were closed, would be shipped over via IP and played into that backup copy of the mailbox database. Which means there was no shared storage required in this model. You can only have two nodes. So now we had a problem. We have an even number of nodes. We want a cluster. But if one node went down, the other node would not be able to make majority. It doesn't have more than half the number of nodes. And so a hotfix was made available for Windows Server 2003 that actually let us assign an additional vote in effect, apart from majority, to a file share that would exist somewhere on a separate file server running Windows Server 2003 at that time, an SMB share. That as long as one of the nodes could communicate with that file share, it would make quorum. This essentially acted as another node. It, it counted, it must have had a vote. So if there was a break in the network now, if this guy can talk to that file share, he has, I guess, essentially two out of the three possible votes. He can still make majority, so he can offer services. If this guy went down, sorry, if this guy went down, he was available. If he could contact the file share, he can make quorum, so he can offer the service. And the way that you make sure both of them don't claim the file share if they can't communicate is there's a witness.log file on this file share, and whichever node is using that file share for their quorum locks that file, which stops the other node claiming it and making quorum. So this guarantees only one of the two nodes can make the quorum. This acts as that point of arbitration. Only one of them can make it. So that was 2003. We had this mixture of different things. Majority node set, the traditional disk, etc. So for Windows Server 2008, they basically took everything and got rid of all these different models. And we just had majority quorum model. And the majority quorum model, let's get rid of these bits here, basically just created a voting, just votes. And how we assign votes determines the mode that we're using. So we can set up a file share that can have a vote. Nodes in the cluster can have votes. We can also, if we have shared storage available, he can have a vote. And essentially all we're saying is we pick who has votes. So, if we want to go to the traditional mode, this is called a disk witness now, not a quorum disk. So, if we had shared storage available, we could say, okay, give the nodes votes and that disk witness a vote. So, that's called node and disk majority. And it works exactly the same. If there's a break in the communication, we just need to make sure that only one side can become active by having the majority of the votes. So it has to have more than half the number of votes. So again, if there's a break in communication here, if he can access that shared storage, he has one vote, two. So he has two out of the three possible votes. This guy's just on his own, he has one out of the three. He has less than half, he has more. He makes four. And that's really all, all there is to it. Again, if there's more nodes, they just get more votes except it just scales out that way. If we don't have shared storage available, nothing changes. But we can use the file share instead. So we get the file share a vote. So in a two node cluster, there's one vote, there's two nodes, there's three votes. Again, breaking communication. Well, I can talk to the file share. I'm gonna lock the witness.log file. One vote, I have two votes available to me. I can make quorum. He can't lock the file share. He goes dormant, just lays idle. So you either want that disk witness or file share witness if you have an even number of nodes. Because the nodes on their own would be equal. If I had four nodes, six nodes, eight nodes, whatever, if I split them equally between locations, it would cause a problem.